So I'm a hot mess right now. But somebody help me. These things aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Somebody help me. These things aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Oh, what am I gonna do? These are things. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, whatever. In the next clip, you're gonna see me struggling to make it through having to relocate again. It's not been easy, but God has told me to be real with you guys. Please don't tell me how to live my life. Please don't tell me to go back home. Please don't tell me the instructions that God didn't give you. I'm gonna end up in my forever home, but for now, God has me kind of bouncing around on this journey and this lesson. Please don't write down in the comments any crazy stuff. Please comment prayerfully if you desire to comment. I love the support. I love the testimonies. I received the prayer requests to pray for you guys and everything. But don't tell me that I'm tripping and I'm in the wrong place because I'm not. And if you do, if I see three words into your comment, you sound crazy. I'm deleting your comment. That's it. So don't waste your time, okay? Um, we're allowed to have down days. So you're going to see me down in that next clip. All right? I end up getting back up. I end up in a different place physically and emotionally. Don't mind my hair. I just cut some bangs and I'm trying to figure it out. So I'm about to exodus from this place you guys last saw me in. <sighs> to be honest with you guys, I'm feeling so extremely drained by this process. I feel like I'm going in circles and I know the story that's on my heart or on my mind is, you know, walking around and causing the walls to fall for Jericho, but this ain't that. You feel me? But the principle could be the same. I just don't know right now, but I'm just, it feels aimless at this point. I experienced something here that I can't put on the internet just yet, or I can't share with you guys how I want to, but it's made it a very tough week in addition to something else that God has allowed to happen or I don't, I don't, I can't really explain it right now, but, oh my gosh, this is loud, but it's like good lighting. I'm about to head off to the next place. It's like a part two of the first thing that y'all saw me make. And I'm tired of coming on here feeling pitiful or looking pitiful. I know I'm supposed to be documenting this process and I know there's a humbling part of life but I've gone through that already and this whole thing has been that and I kind of hate that I have to share this part all the time like God's like tell them what you're going through it's like dang can it be good sometimes <laughs> it does feel like wilderness part two except this one is a little bit more draining in certain ways but I'm concerned that my association with this land has been difficulty, stress. And I wanted to come here with my perception of it being everything that I imagined it to be. And for the first time last night, I felt really tempted to turn back and I'm not going to. And I probably would have a couple of times if it wouldn't have been for the fact that, that what's behind me is worse or what's back home is no better than this. So I'm too deep in to turn back. <laughs> I'm grateful, but to be honest with y'all, I've been stressed out. Certain things that have happened have made me want my covering and certain things that have happened have made me not want that covering. <laughs> so I'm just here. Pushing through the best I know how. But I don't want to put on my war clothes anymore. I don't want to battle anymore. I kind of just 
want to be in a home, right? I'm tired of people. Yeah. I don't want to be in a hotel anymore. I don't want to do this part anymore. But um, everything's going to be okay. This is only a temporal situation. But I feel myself coming to the end of my strength. All right, later. What's up? So, today makes it two months since I flew out to California. It's been, yesterday was a pretty tough day. Today has been tough in its own way, but I've been doing my best to get back up. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And one person that I talk about in the Bible is David. David was a prime example of somebody who was honest about what he was feeling and what he was going through. I don't know if it was Job or David who was like, uh, I resent the day I was even born. I think that was Job. They said these things, but at the end, or at least in the next chapter of whatever passage it was, they speak life instead of death. And I think it's healthy to acknowledge the down parts. You don't want to act all chipper and everything's all good to the point where you off yourself because you're not being honest and you're not confessing your sins and confessing your shortcomings and whatever else you may need to confess in order for people to raise up and pray for you. And I'm a very private person, so it has definitely proven to be a difficulty to come on here and, um, you know, showcase the down parts, the downside of everything. I don't want to act like everything's all good and I also don't want to speak death. I know things will get better. I know that I have to endure. Um, I believe the words that I deliver on this channel. I claim them for myself as long as they are for me. And if you have a channel that's something that is a process to learn, you know, discerning when a word is just for you, for you and other people, or just for other people. And as of late, I believe the words are for me as well. You know, the fact that God is completing things and yeah. I know that God is not a man that he should lie. I've experienced his grace in despite of myself. You know, the grace that's like, it's okay. If you feel down, I'm gonna pick you back up. And there's a religious spirit that has tried targeting me a few times, telling me that I shouldn't be, you know, rejoice. Oh, I'm going through this. I'm going through worse. You shouldn't complain or you're so lucky. Child, you don't know the things that I've gone through for me to have the upside of things. And even the upside of things is not the fullness of everything. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. When I was inside that hotel, I got a taste of what would be prime for me a taste of it because that is not the fullness of it that was like a sample of a gallon of ice cream okay for lack of a better visual okay and in that moment i realized what people mean when they say you could have it all and still feel like you have absolutely nothing <laughs> and that whole quote people say like what's the point of Having all this stuff means nothing if you don't have that, that, that. And my life is not consumed with having a man or not. Like, I'm good on my own. God is my husband, all of that. I mean that. But I'm a human being. Um, woman friends are awesome. Even that was a process that God took me through because I've been so accustomed to women being, you know, wants to compete with me or speak down against me or be a snake you know so it took me a while to learn how to open up to befriend or be open to friendships with women and god did his thing and has sent women in my path and i'm grateful for that because i don't want to be that girl who's like i cannot be friends with females like <laughs> you know anyways um i'm babbling low-key but i want what i deserve i want I want my home, like I said. I want my home. It doesn't even have to fully be the house that God has shown me. I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to inhabit that place regardless, one way or another. I got his appointed time. But 
right now I want to be stable somewhere. I want consistency. I want a place that I could decorate. I want a place where at the end of the month I could look after the situation rather than the end of the day or the end of the week because that becomes stressful. Me and God was beefing because I'm like, God, you've shown me all these good things along the course of this journey, but you, you didn't show me the tough part because when he showed me, promising, he showed me milk and honey, house, all of that, okay? He didn't show me the bouncing around and the stress and the warfare and the attacks. He didn't show me that part, and I'm sure that's because if he did, I probably would have tarried in my coming here. And there are time sensitive instructions when God gives them, you know? So I had to come and I was watching this video, an ASMR video with this woman. And I think it was called titled Ma Ma Petite Mousse or something. It's in French. And I was watching it, I was chilling, I was like, mm -hmm. and then I was like, my niece. <laughs> I miss, I miss my family. And I'm looking forward to building a family of my own. It's what I want. It's the promise that I'm holding fast to. But, um, yeah, at times it hits you. And it's like, dang, I'm really out here. I know there's joy to come um, on the outside looking in. When you're hearing about it, it may sound so amazing. You're in the promised land, all this stuff. And it is amazing. Like, you don't want to... It's easy to become so consumed with the journey ahead of you that you miss how far you've come. And I don't want to be ungrateful. Like, it's a major blessing that God has kept me here. He's shown his mercy. I've experienced godly provision for the first time in my life. I'm so grateful. But I want my home. I want a home and I want my man. <laughs> Look. I'm only human. I'm only human. Don't think I, because I be posting these words out here that I don't have permission to have my down days and as if it's wrong for me to vent. It's okay for me to vent. I will make a separate channel except God told me to keep on this one. I'm going to make a separate channel eventually, but God told me to document this process on my channel because my journey of even starting a prophetic channel is a part of the journey and people are going to look back at this channel. They're not going to see some random chick. Oh my gosh, I'm going to California. Oh my gosh. No, they're going to see the sowing. They're going to see the reaping for the glory of God. It's so much larger than myself. It's beyond myself. And I think that's the thing that encourages me to continue holding fast. I haven't fully crossed over. Like, you guys have been watching me cross. I haven't fully entered in. And that makes sense. And in a way, it is comforting. Because low-key, it's like I'm in promised land. But it also has a little razzle-dazzle of wilderness. And I do want my partner with me. And I, I'm not going to rush God. I'm not going to rush him. I get frustrated. Definitely, I get angry. Believe me. And I thought I would be just like, da, you know, da, da, da. if you don't know what that's from, I'm sorry. I have these moments. But um, that's the major desire of my home. <laughs> that's the major desire of my heart right now. Home and love. Look at you guys. I'm ready for a new phase. Um, I guess my encouragement, apart from the venting part, is Jeremiah 29 11. That's all I got right now. He has plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. That's all. I'm looking for hope. I'm praying for hope. I'm praying for faith. I'm praying for the gift of faith. You know, that faith that's like beyond us and imparted to us from our Father in Heaven to keep on going to see the vision come to pass. I'm praying for the gift of faith. I'm praying for strength and I'm praying for clarity right now because right now I just, it feels like I'm going in circles. Um, it feels aimless. It's kind of like, what's the point? What, what am I bouncing around here for? What is the point? In due time, I will understand. I will see the point. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for your support, though. Thank you guys for the support. I, 
do thank you guys for the support, the prayers, the seeds, everything, man. I, I appreciate you guys so much. I would have turned back had it not been for my family in Christ. I would have perished. So my appreciation for you guys is real. Um, keep your head up. It's worth it. We're going to make it into the fullness of it. And pretty soon one of these days, I'm going to come on here. I'm like, year. Greetings from my house. My house. In the most humble way possible. That's going to happen. That's in the works. In the hands of God. Um, it's not over. I want certain things to be over. But what's not over is my fight. I had a very weak week. Yeah, I had a very weak week but i'm heading towards something i'm gonna make it in i'm not turning back i i was tempted i feel tempted at times recent recently i've been feeling tempted though to just get a break like ugh, i want to go home just to take a break because i feel like i'm running a very consistent 100 meter race over and over and over it's like 100 meters 100 meters and then when it's rest time it's like my mind is still running because it's like what you mean rest I gotta work to be sustained and kept out here. What you mean, rest? So, it's faith and trust and endurance. And, um, we gonna be all right. Do you hear me? Do you feel me? We gonna be all right. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm gonna testify, though. I'm gonna speak life over myself before I leave. Practice what I preach, right? That's not why I'm doing it. But this is what I did. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus that there's a home awaiting me. There's the house that God has shown me that I am going to inhabit in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be in that house and all of them square feet testifying of the goodness of the Lord. What is it? 4,900 signs square feet. Do I sound crazy? Totally fine. Took Joseph from the pit. All them other places. Ultimately to the palace and I'm going to end up in my palace. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ. I'm a stand. I'm going to believe though I grow weary in my weakness. I am strong through Christ and he is completing the work that he has begun in me. He is completing what he has begun in my area, in my in the promised land, in my life. It, this, tes this testimony is not going to end with defeat. It's going to end with being more than a conqueror is going to end with it being all that god has promised it to be because his word is not returning to him void he's not a man that he should lie i will not die i will not die but i will live and i will thrive in the name of jesus i will prosper and all that i put my hands to it will prosper in the name of jesus this promised land ain't seen nothing yet concerning cristo nicola you feel me <laughs> and i'm going to be a married woman woman I'm going to be married in love with a faithful man, with a God-fearing man, an anointed man who's not perfect, but made perfect through Christ Jesus, who's going to come over here like, what's good? Let's do this thing. And you're going to see him, hear him, because we're going to do a podcast testifying. And then when we're comfortable, we're going to come on camera and you're going to see how amazing we look together. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, pray for me. Pray, please pray regarding stalkers, regarding crazy people, because they're out here and I had a crazy experience. Please pray for me. Pray my safety as I document this process. Pray my strength so that I can perceive the reality of the fact that this is larger than myself. It's not just about me. Pray my humility as God expands me and reveals what he does to me as he develops this channel. Yes, pray my covering if God has given you that assignment as I pray for those of you whom I am assigned to and as I pray corporately for you guys and I pray that you, that you be blessed because you are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name, I'm going to head out with my sister in Christ and I'm going to do my best to enjoy this day. Love you guys later. My name is Cristo Nicolai and that will be changing soon. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Later.